and welcome to the Sky Night Magazine vodcast. Here's what's coming up in this month's episode. We look at the latest images from the WISE spacecraft, we'll see how you can get involved in helping solar scientists, and see the latest images of the Aurora on Saturn. Plus, we'll give you top tips on what to look out for in the night skies this month. But first, let's look at the news. Now take a look at these images here. They're from NASA's WISE telescope, which was launched in December last year. Now, these are in fact the first images sent back by the probe, and as you can see, they're extremely detailed. WISE stands for the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, and its task is to survey the entire sky at infrared wavelengths. Because it sees infrared radiation from celestial objects, it can pick out different regions of them that might otherwise be obscured by dust and gas when observing at different wavelengths. Now this image shows a very familiar object to amateur astronomers. It's M31, or the Andromeda Galaxy. Now WISE's instruments allow us to see the older stars in the galaxy, which we see in blue here in this image, and it also shows us the younger stars in its spiral arms, which show up in yellow. Now these new images are just the start of WISE's study, however. In the future, it's hoped it will study comets, as well as asteroids, and interesting cool stars known as brown dwarfs. Now if you're a fan of the Galaxy Zoo project, which lets members of the public classify galaxies, you may be interested in this latest citizen science project. Called Solar Stormwatch, it lets you help solar scientists study the sun by looking at images and videos from the Stereo spacecraft to search out signs of coronal mass ejections or great solar storms from the sun. Coronal mass ejections are, as the name suggests, huge ejections of plasma that erupt from the sun out into the solar system. Now you look for these epic explosions on the Solar Stormwatch website by watching videos of images sent down to Earth by Stereo. If you spot a storm in the videos, you can then flag it up. You'll then have to answer a few questions about what it shows, such as when the storm appears in the frame. Then the data you've analysed is sent off to scientists working on the project. Solar Stormwatch is being run by the Royal Observatory Greenwich and the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory in the UK. So if you're interested in monitoring solar storms, why not log on to the website and get tracking? From solar storms to Aurora now, but not on Earth, on Saturn. These newly released images from the Hubble Space Telescope were taken early last year, and they show Aurora dancing around both of Saturn's poles over the course of several days. The aurora at Saturn are created as particles emitted from the Sun are funneled down towards its polar regions by the planet's magnetic field. When this happens, the particles collide with the upper atmosphere, causing the gases there to glow. And it's this faint glow that Hubble has picked up in these new images. Remarkably, the aurora at Saturn's poles aren't exactly the same, and Hubble scientists have put this down to the fact that Saturn's magnetic field is stronger in the northern hemisphere, than the Southern Hemisphere, creating a more intense light show there. Well, that's it for the news. Let's now see what you should be looking out for in April's night skies. There's a good chance this month to see the 550 km wide asteroid Pallas in our night sky. Now, as this chart shows, it'll be moving against the background stars of the constellation of Serpens Caput over the course of the month. But the best time to see it will be when it's at opposition on the 30th of April. That night, it'll be shining with an apparent magnitude of plus 8.7, so it's an ideal target for binoculars or a small telescope. You can use the main sky chart in April's Sky at Night magazine to find the rough location to look for Pallas in. First, find the plough in Ursa Major, then trace the plough's handle towards the star Arcturus in Bootes. From there, you'll find the constellation of Serpens Caput a little further to the east. Now, as well as an opportunity to see Pallas, there are also going to be some great post-sunset views to be had this month. On the 1st of April, after sunset, Venus and Mercury are going to be visible shining way low in the west. Then, on the evening of the 16th of April, the crescent moon will sit between the two planets and the Pleiades star cluster, providing a great opportunity for some wide-field astrophotography. Lastly, on the 23rd of April, Venus and the Pleiades will be close together in the night skies, making for another great astrophoto opportunity. For more information on all of these events, as well as a packed calendar on what to see in the night skies in April, check out the 14-page Sky Guide in the April issue of the magazine. If the skies are cloudy this month, we can always rely on the sky at night to give us our monthly TV astronomy fix. Here's what's coming up in the April episode. 
This month's episode celebrates the 250th anniversary of Scottish astronomy with help from the Astronomer Royal for Scotland, Professor John Brown. In particular, the programme will explore the conclusion by an 18th century Scottish astronomer, Alexander Wilson, that sunspots are small depressions on the sun's surface. The episode will also bring us up to date with news from the twin stereo mission to study the sun, as well as what's in store for NASA's new solar mission, the Solar Dynamic Observatory, which launched from Cape Canaveral in early February. Well, that's it for this episode of the Vogcast. If you're out observing this month, I hope you get some clear skies. Take care, and I'll see you again next month. Bye.